a small step forward is still a step forward. And that is the thought for today. Welcome to 7 Good Minutes. I'm Clyde Lee Dennis. Thanks for joining me for what I believe will be seven of the most enriching minutes of your day. In today's episode of 7 Good Minutes, we get some great tips on how to pull yourself out of a rut when you find yourself in one. Enjoy. Okay, so strategy number one is to utilize the do something principle. This principle is the catalyst for action. If you don't have the motivation to do something, you need something that'll spark some sort of action, something to get the momentum going, something to get the ball rolling. And the do something principle is a means to take action when you don't have the motivation to do anything. So most people think that in order to take action on anything, you need to be motivated to do that. And motivation comes when you're inspired inspired by something. So for instance, say you're browsing Reddit or something and you come across a Matt Diavella video and by the end he says something that strikes a chord with you and you're inspired to take action. That inspiration served as the adequate motivation to take action on your goals. But the do something principle dictates that inspiration, motivation, action is not a linear sequence. It's an endless loop and you can start wherever you want to start. So it's far more efficient to start with action and let that action become the inspiration and the motivation necessary to take further action. So you may be thinking, thanks genius, if I'm unmotivated to do something, then I should just do something. That's really helpful. But you actually take action without motivation all the time. Do you need some sort of huge inspirational epiphany to take a shower? No, it's just something you do. These monotonous actions are the very actions you should be using as momentum to take further action. If you're just sitting there waiting for inspiration to strike you, go brush your teeth. Brushing your teeth is a little constructive action that will give you momentum into taking further action. If you have to write a giant essay, don't think to yourself, oh, I have to go and write my giant 4,000 word essay. Just say, I'm gonna open up the Word doc, write whatever comes to my mind for one minute, and that's it, that's all I have to do. But once you start writing, you will tend to want to write more because you've convinced yourself to get there. That is in essence the do something principle. Now strategy number two seems counterintuitive to what I just said, and that is to reward yourself for small wins. Now if you follow this channel at all, I'm not a pat yourself on the back and everyone gets an award kind of guy. So if you're in the same boat, you might cringe at the thought of rewarding yourself for taking a shower or something like that because you know you're capable of so much more. But the need to reward yourself for small wins, especially if you're in a vulnerable situation, is a psychological necessity. And it has everything to do with the fact that you have basically two sides of your brain. And I'm not talking about right and left. I'm talking more about the more primal part of your brain, which is closer to the stem, which is responsible for motivation and emotion and stuff like that. And your more logical, abstract, moralistic part of your brain which is present more in the prefrontal cortex. So if your prefrontal cortex knows to use the do something principle in order to convince your primal side of your brain to take action on something, it's important that you're not too iron-fisted with this because it's a negotiation with yourself. Don't be a slave driver to the primal side of your brain or your primal side of your brain won't feel listened to, it'll lash out, and it won't want to do anything that your logical side of your brain wants it to do. So you almost need to use your higher judgment to provide compassionate guidance to the primal part of your brain and very gradually win it over. If you're too lazy to pretty much do anything other than sit around all day and you use the do something principle to convince your primal side of your brain to brush your teeth, take a shower, get some nice clothes on and clean your kitchen and you start to get really tired and agitated after this, take a break. It may sound suspect and your logical side of your brain knows that you should be doing a lot more than that Just take it easy. Reward yourself for doing something constructive for once after days of binging dopamine and just relax and have a good time. So you might be thinking, how the heck am I supposed to get out of a rut if I don't ride this momentum out into the sunset? That's what tip number three is all about. So strategy number three is all about progressive overload. It's very similar to the philosophy of lifting weights and getting stronger. Instead of yo-yoing between taking crazy amounts of action and then your primal brain lashing out and going into long periods, 
periods of self-destruction, you should be massaging yourself into organically growing a lifestyle that you gradually get used to that's more and more productive and you do more and more every day while rewarding yourself for the small wins and comparing yourself to who you were yesterday rather than who someone else is today. So for instance, if you develop a game plan over the course of seven days to get out of a rut, that's a lot more realistic than just trying to be productive all of a sudden. So say day one, you can't really do much other than go on the internet for long periods of time. On this day, if you convince yourself to take pretty much any sort of constructive action, that should be sufficient for the day. Day one should just be about gradually taking a little bit more action and being happy with that. And the next day, remind yourself that that wasn't so bad and it actually felt pretty good to take action and try to do a little bit more. And if you do this day after day, then gradually and organically, both sides of your brain will be in agreement, and you'll very comfortably start to rise from the ashes like a phoenix and uh, become the person that you were earlier in that month. I can't stress how important this is. Managing expectations, being patient with yourself, and letting your higher faculties be very communicative with the more primal and emotional sides of your brain. This synergy between both sides of your brain is integral for maintaining long-term success. And you can eventually be very reliably and sustainably living the kind of life that you've always wanted to be living. Please keep in mind, this is about half of the entire presentation. If you're up for a treat, you should definitely listen to the whole thing. You can do so by clicking the link labeled View the Full Video on YouTube in the show notes. So that does it for this episode of 7 Good Minutes. Until next time, let's be civil to one another out there. Thanks for listening.